Hi everyone and welcome to another series of Hidden Treasures where we're getting to know more about our members and as part of Black History Month we're getting to know our members of the community and today I'm pleased to say that I have Olatunji with me. Hi Olatunji, how are you? I'm fine thanks. Great to see you and those who know you at church, you're our cake man, you bring lots of cakes, you bless us with your baking but for those who don't know you, Olatunji, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Israel Marcos Olatunji Obi. Actually, I swapped it around to Olatunji Israel Marcos. I was born on the 26th of July, 1951. I went to primary school. After primary school, I went to the first secondary school that was established in the rule of West Africa, Sierra Grammar School. Mm. After finishing fifth form O levels, I did not go to sixth form because I wanted to do it do the sixth form in one year. So I had private tuition and I sat for A level, I sat English, maths, use of English and art. And after that, I actually, I worked in a casino for a couple of years before coming to England uh, as a croupier. I came to England in July 1972. Right. And I went to Kilburn Polytechnic for two years. After that, I went to South Bank, which was then a polytechnic, South Bank University, and did housing management. And my first job was actually during holiday. I worked in a for an agency that was based in Camberwell. And I worked for them for, a, it was actually during the summer holidays I started working for them. And after that, my very first job, I worked for Barclays Bank for a number of years. And after that, latterly, I worked for both Camden and Haringey Mediation Services for quite a number of years. And when I finally retired, I still continued working on a voluntary basis. And I, I only left, actually, after so many years. When they did the review, I was the most success, successful mediator or observer mediator. And um, I left, got fed up with it because when they had the well-paid jobs, they, they gave it to their friends or whatever. So I decided I would not continue doing it. And actually, I've, I've been doing a lot for charity. I used to cook to feed about 80 people on a weekly basis wow. for a charity called El Shaddai that was mm. based in Walsham Store. Well, I, I used to cook every week for to feed 80 people. And I uh, they said that they will pay me. Well, I said I don't want to be paid because it was for a charity. Yeah. Well, all I ask is that they give me the money I spend to buy the ingredients. Mm. They're supposed to give me the money before I did the cooking, but they never gave the money to me. Once I was broke, actually, I traveled out, out, out of London. And I needed the money, and they didn't pay the money into my account. And I was expecting the money to use the money whilst I was away. So after that, I told them that they should pay the money into my account before I did the shopping. Anyway, that was another story. But I, st I stopped doing it about a year ago, really. And um, I started going to church nine months before I was born. Normally, when I meet people in the city who are, who are, who are, who are actually recruiting members for their church. I normally tell them I, I've been going to church nine months before I was born, and I have my own church. My mother was extremely religious. She started teaching son, um, Sunday school, you know, in the Sunday school, mm -hmm. in her teens. Even after she, she died, one year after she passed away, the church had a big celebration put a plaque in the in the church on on her on on her memory. Mm. 
Mm. My mother was an Anglican. My father was Methodist. Normally, you have to take your father's religion. But my mother, none of us belong to my mother's church, only her, but we normally go to her church on alternate Sundays. Mm. Until she died, she paid what was called, or what is still called, class pens. Class pens is what you pay on a weekly basis. If you don't pay class pens when you die, your your funeral will not be held in that church unless you pay all the back mm. back um, dues. My mother always paid class pens for all her children, although we none of us belong to her church. And before we go to church on Sunday, my mother will keep one hour church service at home. She belonged to all sorts of mothers' union. She was very, very active. Unfortunately, my mother died in this country at the age of 92. Well, we took the funeral, the, the corpse back, back to Sierra Leone for the funeral. Mm. See, you know, she always said, you should return from whence you came. So she always wanted to go back home. She, she was only here for the summer months and she always traveled back to Sierra Leone for the, for the winter. And she's visited Many, many countries, 14 states in America. I've never been to one state in America. My mother used to love traveling, but she had decided just before she passed away, she had decided that she wanted to go back for good and will not come back. Unfortunately, she died just after that. She was only sick for one day. Mm. You know, uh, I mean, I don't know what more can I say. I mean, it sounds like... You know? All of Tundra, you've got such um, an, um, a rich tapestry in your life. And is it fair to say that what you were sharing there about your mum, that you your mum was very influential for you on, on, on their faith? Yes, definitely. I, I, always, I, I brought up my children and make them believe mm. in their life that it's important to have a father. Mm. But the most important person in your life should always be your mother. A man, as a man, I've never got pregnant. I will never get pregnant. Mm. So to carry that load for nine months, no man has ever experienced what it feels like to carry that burden. And also childbirth can be easy for women to be screaming in pain. So I always teach my children that even if your mother gives birth to you and she threw you away, you must always respect Mm. Respect your mother. My mother struggled to look after us. My father, my mother and father were not married. My mother got married, but the marriage did not work. So my father was married to somebody else, but he was most responsible. My father was the head of the post office in Sierra Leone. His, his position was postmaster general. Mm. And he wanted to come and study law. So he took Ali Tamint and came to study law. So I, I only saw my father when I was 11 years old, when he returned, finally he turned back to Sierra Leone. But everything I wore, he was most responsible for me. Mm. Financially, not physically, my mother struggled to look after all his, all her children. And my father was very responsible. That's why the same way I treat my children. If you can... Go and do press ups with somebody to produce a child. You have to be responsible. <laughs> the last time, <laughs> Charles, you've met Charles, my first yeah, son. Uh, yeah, that's right. I have. When his, when his mother in law came to visit me once, she said, Charles is very responsible. Charles is a very good dad. I say, Yes, he was brought up to be responsible. <laughs> you know? Yes. I mean, I, I, everybody say I like cooking. I don't like cooking. I like eating. <laughs> nice food, but I can afford to buy it and cook it. Okay, you know? in, in, yeah. And I guess as well, Olatunji, that you cook is your way of giving something back, isn't it? It's your way of worship. Yes, my mother My mother never cook mm. just for the household. She will cook and give it to her neighbours. That's exactly what I do. Like when I bake, I give to my neighbours. Mm. At Christmas time, I cook different things and give to my neighbours. Really. Mm. You know, that's the way, I mean, I can't, I don't know how to cook for one, one or two people. Mm. I normally cook and ask people to come and 
share with me, really. Mm, mm. You know? Yeah. It, it's an amazing story that what you've shared with us, Olatunji. And I wonder, so obviously, when you moved from Sierra Leone, in, was it 1971 you moved? 1972. 1972. Yeah. July 1972. In fact, actually, I came, I came on holiday. My intention was to come on holiday. A university space was waiting for me in the United States. Mm. When I came, my sister came to this country in 1966. When I came, my sister said, don't you think it's better if you stay here? We can help support each other. So that's what, that was why I decided to stay here. Mm. You know, and I've, I've never, well, I've never been to America since I, maybe when I change, I guess, permanently, my mm. spirits, my spirits will wander and visit mm. America, but my mother has been to, been to 14 different states. My mother used to love traveling. She's been to every country, virtually every country in Europe. I've oh, only no. been to France and Holland, mm. you know? Yeah. And, yes. and what was it like, Olatunji, for you to in 1972 um, to move and into the move to UK? What what was it like for you in 1972? It was okay. There were, I didn't I didn't encounter any problem at all. It's only actually I worked I worked briefly for Westminster Council, mm. and after a day. One of the personnel officers said, I, I showed my passport and he said, I'm not entitled to work in this country. Mm. So in fact, I took them to, I took them to a tribe, I took them to a tribunal. Mm. So I thought that was a discrimination against me. I mean, I don't see why, why he shouldn't have, they shouldn't have allowed me to work. Yeah. Because my passport was in order. Mm, mm. You know, I didn't encounter it. As I said, my sister has been very supportive, although once in a while, we, we <laughs> you know, we, we are, you know, we, we actually help support each other. And I've never had any problem other, other than that once. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, um, it's, it's good that you've been able to come, um, in 1972 and not have, problems as such even though you would have as you sh just shared with us you had some challenges um but what was i mean you said you worked in the put in the bank i mean what was that like working in the bank it was actually what happened i was working on a temporary mm. summer job actually i worked around the christmas period and i saw an advert in the evening standard it was Manpower employment services that are, that 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 actually had their advert in the evening center, and I phoned them and they said, unfortunately, the last vacancy has just been filled. So they said, phone us again after the new year, mm. after Christmas, and I kept the curtain inside my desk at work, and I was clearing my desk one when I saw the paper. So I called them and they said, they've only got one vacancy. So I should go for a test. They said, can I come the following day? I said, I can come now. So I took a taxi and went to the employment agency. Mm. And they tested me and said I passed the test. And they said I should sign them on the taking that I will take the job after six months. Permanently. So I decided to keep my day job. I did two full-time jobs for six and a half months. I used to work day and night. Wow. And I rented a room in the city so I could pack a case because, you know, for the backless job, mm. I, I, I could guess casually because it was nice working in the clearing department initially. And my day job, I had to wear a suit and tie. So I had to pack a case and I rented a room in the city. So I could, I, I slept during my break. During my lunch break at Barclays, I slept. During my tea breaks, I slept. And I, I, in, in, I always say, God always wake me in time to actually go back to work. Mm. You know, so I did both jobs for six and a half months. Mm. And because when I was earning so much money, 
it cushioned the burden. At that time, I was a single parent, actually, to Charles. Mm. Charles's mother gave him to me when he was one month and one year old. Mm. So I was a single parent for a number of years. Actually, I I used to attend the Jehovah's Witness Chapel in Highgate because they were very, very helpful. In fact, I have difficulty picking Charles off from his nursery was in Barnet, in church, in Wood Street, Barnet. Mm. And then later on, they moved because the building had some roofing, some, some ceiling problem, moved all the way to Ackley. So I had to go drop him at the nursery. And it was very, very, it was very difficult, you know, for me to drop it. But the matron was very, very nice. The matron said, I'm at the nursery, I'm at the nursery from 7.30. So you can drop him anytime after 7.30. But then, unfortunately, when the matron retired, the new matron was not so helpful. So I had to find a child mind now. I can leave him with him and take him to the nursery for me. Then I pick him up later in the afternoon, you know. Wow. Um, the, I mean, the, the, Jehovah, yeah. sorry, the, the Jehovah's Witness people were most helpful. As I said, if I was not a born Methodist, I most certainly would have become a Jehovah's Witness. Well, I told them I, I could I would study the Bible with them, but I will still stay with my Methodism. Brilliant, and and, and all the times I'm glad you have. Um, and I mean, just hearing your story about your mum, you know, being Anglican, your dad being uh, Methodist, and then yourself um, as a single parent going to the Jehovah's Witness, which I yeah. don't really know much about myself. Um, mm-hmm. but it makes you feel very makes you sound very ecumenical um but you 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 are such a great example because you've been through so much even as with a single parent to charles but yet you appreciate all that you have around you don't you you so you like to give stuff back to the community yes well i have very good friends i mean when my like say for example when my mother passed away last year mm. i've got most of my friends, my male friends, most of my male friends are Muslims. Mm. When my mother passed away, I did not tell my friends at all that my mother passed away, but I don't know how they got to know. And the one in, the one who has a sister in Sheffield, mm. she phoned me and said she wants to pay for my for my fare, you know, to go to the funeral in Sierra Leone. And I said, she shouldn't because my sister already um, offered to pay for my ticket. And I don't know, she told her brother who works and lives in Saudi Arabia, and the brother said, he's going to send money to pay for my ticket. And he sent... He said, because if he send the money from Saudi Arabia, international transfers take a long time. So he's got a daughter who qualified as a doctor here mm. a couple of years ago. He said he's asked his daughter to pay £1,200 into my account, and the daughter said she would add another 300 And when I was in Freetown, my other friend who lives in Virgin Island, British Virgin Island, sent me $2,000. So I've got, I've got good friends, you get me. I mean, I've done a lot yeah. for them, but they've yeah. done a lot for me as well. The one who lives in Saudi Arabia, so, yeah, um, British Virgin Island, when they had the hurricane six, 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 seven years ago, they just built a five bedroom house and two bedroom bungalow. It was all destroyed by the hurricane. So, luckily, all of them had British passports. They were living in a hotel which was very expensive. The first, his first daughter had finished university, so she didn't come, but the wife and two younger daughters came to live with me. They were with me for almost four years. You know, so, I mean, I've done a lot for them. They've done a lot for me as well. My last son was conceived in the Gambia. You know? Wow. The one in Saudi Arabia bought a ticket for my wife and son to go to the Gambia from Sierra Leone. Mm. And the one in British Virgin Island came, bought a business class ticket, took me to the Gambia, 
I did not know my wife was going. She did not know I was going. And my wife, my, my last son was conceived in the Gambia. And when I wanted to christen my son, they, they said I should go and christen him in the Gambia because they didn't want me to spend any money. I said, no, I can't because my wife son will not be able to attend. Well, it's quite a number of them went to the, went to the christening. Yeah. In, in Alone, you know? Yeah. That, that's, in, that's incredible, Olatunji. And, um, you do a lot of work, as you said, over here with feeding 80 people. Um, I'm guessing homeless people, is that right? Homeless, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I stopped doing it now. I don't do it anymore yeah. because it was was a lot of work. Yeah, know? but it's incredible. And I suppose with it being, we're interviewing members of Hidden Treasures, is that I didn't know that. And I think that's, that's sometimes it's a good thing when people don't know is because you don't do it to be seen. Uh, no. To be fair, do you do it because you want to do it? And, yeah. and I think that's just wonderful that you're feeding eighty people. If it was me, I'd be singing it. I'd be I'd be telling everybody. <laughs> um, but also, you've not you've not you've not just done stuff over here, but you've done stuff in Sierra Leone of where you was born and where you moved from. Yes. Do, you, do you want to tell people briefly what you've what what did you do in Sierra Leone? To help. Well, in Sierra Leone, I was paying school fees for a number of number of children, mm. but actually, I stopped stopped it all when I went last August. I mm. told them all that I couldn't do it anymore. I was paying university fees for a few of them. In fact, I'm paying university for two children. Why not not my natural children up to mm. now? Really, but it's 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 quite expensive. Yeah, you know, even my my last son actually, I I I made sure he took the British GC. Mm. It, I had to pay over five hundred pounds just for him to take the exams. Yeah, right now to go to six form, it's cost. I can't even tell you how much it's costing. Money I cannot afford. Mm. Extortionate yeah. amount of money. Right. I'm wow. going to try by between by next year. To make sure he's over here with me, you know, because I can't. I mean, he's been in he's been in private school all his life. It's not because the schools are not as good as they used to, you know. Before the standard of education, if you know Mark Wakeling, I do. Yeah, I know Mark. Mark Wakeling went to school in Sierra Leone. Did he know? And his daughter's his daughter's husband who conducted the service last week Sunday. Yeah, that's right. Her husband yeah. was born in Sierra Leone as well. Quite a number of people used to send their children to school in Sierra Leone, but unfortunately, because of bad, bad governance, bad, bad government, our our standards have dropped drastically. Mm, mm. So you yeah. helped to fund people to go to school. Yes. Yeah, and, and yeah. I de- we decided. My wife should stay in Sierra Leone because she was the only one who cared and looked after her mother. Mm. And that's why she, she's still there. Well, her mother has passed away now, so hopefully by next year I'm going to apply for her and my son to come over here. Wow, that that yeah, that is it'd be great to see them and welcome them. And I I hope they bring the weather from Sierra Leone as well. Well, you know, last last winter. Mm. First time I've never experienced since I've been here in nineteen since nineteen seventy two. I've never experienced a snow free winter in London. Yeah, yeah. Not a single drop of snow fell, and yeah. we have to pray that the same happens this year. Mm, mm, yeah, hopefully. Um, and am I right in thinking, Olatunji, in in Sierra Leone, you helped to build a school? Is that right? Yes, well, now, right now, financially, I cannot. I was, mm. I was before, only now when I go to Sierra Leone, I, um, I go there every day mm. to oversee. Now we're building a much bigger structure, but it's my sister who is financing it solely now. I, I cannot afford it anymore. So, I mean, it's a wonderful what you've done, helping people Help, helping people in this country with the homeless and helping people in Sierra Leone with their education. And 
we're so blessed that you do have a, you, that you do come to us, Olatunji. And I wondered, as we've been looking with Black History Month, as we look at the life of the church, I wonder, Olatunji, what would you like to see at Muswell Hill Methodist Church? You've been with us for a very long time, but I wondered, what would you like to see at Muswell Hill? Um, I would, well, unfortunately, hardly any child goes to church now. Mm, mm. My son, Charles, when he was four years old, I sent him home to my mother. I wanted him to attend school in there. But after six months, I decided I should not burden my, my mother with looking after my child. Mm. I thought at that age, she struggled to look after us. So I think at a later year, she should enjoy herself, dress lavishly if she can afford, go out. My mother, my mother was somebody who could not stay still. Mm. She would go, she lived in a village, well, it's part, it's not a village anymore, apparently. It's, it used to be a village called Lomley. Mm. And she would go into town three, four times a day. The same as me and my sister. If I don't go out, this is the this week, past week is the first time I stayed home three days without going out. If I don't go out, I feel sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Physically sick, you know. I have to be out and about. Yeah, in sure. my family, in my family, we don't get sick. Mm. We just change address permanently when our time is up. <laughs> my mother was only sick for one day. My brother who passed away last August was only sick for one day. I've never, I've never known. I've told anybody I'm not feeling well. Mm -hmm. Only on three months ago, I got knocked knocked down by a car on Peggy's Lane, oh, threw me into the Shell petrol station, and since then I've been having back pain. My whole mm -hmm. left side is half pain on my left side. Mm -hmm. I used to have headaches, but the headaches have subsided. I don't get the headaches anymore. I still feel pain in my knee, crotch mm. area, my leg and calves, and my back. But hopefully, it's get, it's getting better. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm glad to hear that. And Olatunji, no. I, I want to say thank you for for joining us and sharing your story. You are our hidden treasure, and we're so glad for all that you do and that you continue to be a blessing to us. And even extending our wastelands, you help us by giving us loads of food. But we thank you that you've joined us. And for those who uh, have watching these, either on YouTube or on our podcast channel, we'll be having another episode of this next week when I will be interviewing another church member during Black History Month. And if watching on YouTube, please use the comments below to share your comments and also to like our youtube channel so thank you everyone for joining us and see you again soon take care and god bless thank you yes